Well, hello, Fiber friends. I'm so happy to be together again. Thank you, as always, for joining me. And for those of you who are new, welcome to this wonderful community. I am Helene, and this is another episode of Cabin Fever Crochet. And today I'm going to show you some yarns from a little Kirshner's Willow Yarn Purchase that I made recently, including one of their grab bags. I'm so excited. It came in today's mail. I was like, oh, you know, almost hyperventilating from the excitement and anticipation. But I resisted opening or even peeking so we could do that together on camera. I'm usually the kind of person that I like to know what I'm getting. I spend time researching, looking, comparing when I get yarns, and I'm just becoming more and more selective these days. But with that being said, it was very reasonable, $14.99, and they had a shipping special, so I decided just go for it and be surprised because I've been getting more into the wools over the last several months and kind of on a quest finding some that can really be my go-to while experimenting with others and some patterns that I use over and over again and new ones that I'm trying as well. So I'm going to go over some things in the catalog because I found something I thought was very interesting and then also a couple of non-willow uh, or Hirschner brand yarns because they are pairing other brands too. Baraco, which is one of them, and that's a favorite of mine. And I happen to have one here that I will show you too that's in the catalog. And I usually try to work up something before I show you, but um, I thought I, I didn't want to wait any longer to open it. The package. So I thought, well, I'll just show you what I got and that'll give you an idea and give you some good close ups too. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and, and go in order. I did purchase a few things that I knew what I was getting. And then one that I haven't received yet that is still on back order. And I got enough to make a cowl with one of their patterns. And this is their verbena yarn and I'm getting it in this color which is called spring water it's a very pretty combination I think they're all lovely actually and this is a number three weight and it is 75 percent superwash 25 percent nylon three and a half ounces 100 G's grams you get 370 yards. But I saw this yarn, Premier Nordica, and I was very intrigued by it. And it's one of the mm, self-pattern, patterning type of yarns. So this is a knit design, which I think knit is going to create the pattern more so than crochet. But I'm venturing into knitting just a little bit, dipping my toe into that again. And actually, that was my beginnings. I started when I was a very young child. My grandmother taught me to knit. But I haven't knit in since junior high. That's when I learned to crochet, and that's all I've done since. So I wanted to just test the waters a little bit, kind of go back to my roots just to see if I can and how well <laughs> that I can do it and if I even like it and enjoy it enough. But this yarn is so, so soft. When I pulled it out of the package, I didn't know what it was. And when I touched it, I was like, wow, this feels amazing. What is it? And then to my surprise, oh yeah. Okay, and this is 100% acrylic, but I believe it's, um, What's nice is it's tested and approved against 350 plus harmful substances and it meets the, the standard. I don't know if this, yes, it's 100% anti-pilling, like new, wash after wash, and you get quite a bit of yarn, 546 yards, 7 ounces, 
200 grams of 7.99. That's a fair amount, 546 yards, plenty for a nice scarf or a cowl or, you know, I just, I just really kind of wanted to try it out. I think this would be very pretty for self-patterning. Oh, and this is in the color Spearmint. And I love how they show, um, you know, a pattern on there. And it's looking pretty true to color with the different, three different shades of green, which might be showing up a little bit gray on camera, maybe because it's, you know, against the bluish gray top that I have on. And then a bit of a kind of an off-white, creamishy white background. Very nice. Quite lovely. And then the, another one I got, which I'm really excited about. I've been looking at this off and on for months and months, and I finally got one. And I hope that it's enough, because there is a knit pattern. Looks really easy, but right now I'm just still practicing my stitches and getting the rhythm and getting those down and, and making mistakes and learning how to to fix those and drop loops and taking out rows if I need to before I really actually start a pattern pattern. I, I had casting on down. That came back to me like that because all I ever did was knit and purl. I never learned to cast off. I actually never really finished a project, but I knit and purled a lot, a lot when I was little, and my main job was to help my grandmother wind balls of yarn. I, I would be the mannequin holding <laughs> pieces, the, the ends while she wound it the old-fashioned way. But I tell you, those of you who are younger and just coming into the world of fiber, you have it so good now. I'm so lucky because there's so much to choose from. And, and with being able to order online and so many different fibers, they have come such a long way. Because wool back in the day that I experienced anyway was that really super coarse, like uh, army surplus issue type blanket wool. And anyone who's sensitive, I mean, that, that was just no, no way, no how. And even most of the acrylics that I had experienced um, when I was really young weren't much better. And then when I got in, like, into high school in the mid-70s, I started finding other and experiencing some that were a little bit nicer, but still nothing like we have today. So this one is Willow Wheels. I don't, well, it's 139 grams, three, oh, 377 yards. Interestingly enough, I am not seeing the ounces. And perhaps 4.9, yes, 4.9 ounces. And this is the color Flora, which is this bottom one here. And you get... The color changes several times within that. So at least two of each color, and it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five colors. So you get 10 color changes total. And then for this kind of um, mm, rose, dusty rose color, dusty rose going into the coral rust a little bit. That has repeated itself three times. I think it's really pretty. And they have a lot of nice colorways here. And so 377 yards should be enough. I'm looking at this kind of a triangular cowl. And this is a number three weight. And it's 70 acrylic, 30 wool. And I'm one of those sensitive to wool, but I tell you what, this... It, my neck. My neck's always a good test. But sometimes it might feel soft doing this, but when I actually work it up and have it around my neck and the full bulk of it, and then once, not the bulk, but the full expanse of it, and then once I work it up and then the fibers tend to um, bloom and loft out a little bit, and that's when I can really feel it. But as it is in the cake, I mean, as close to feel a vision as we can get, you, you can just see how squishy it is. And it has 
bit of a halo. It's most yarns, I don't know if you could see that or not, but it's not overly so. This is, I'm really, really pleased with that. See how it works up. Just looking at it from the outside, I do not see any visible flaws, but you don't really know until you get into it. But this is so pretty going from this dusty rose into a very soft butter yellow, aqua, lime green, and a very pretty lilac -y lavender right here. There it is repeating again, and then back into that dusty rose. So then I got one, this is I wish I couldn't decide on the color. So if I just like, eh, I'm just gonna try it. And this is Willow Drift. And this, I'm gonna show you what I think it's very similar to. And this again, it's a number, another number three weight. It's 70 superwash wool, 30% rayon from bamboo. It's made in China. And this is the color sandbar. And you get, it's a three and a half ounce cake, a little bit smaller than what I thought it would be, but I mean, it still has the yardage, 275 yards. Oh, oh, and price-wise, I remember this, sorry, like kind of all over the place, but um, so reasonable, $4.99 for this. I think that's incredibly reasonable for the, the quality of that it feels like, where it's made, um, the texture. Now this one is Willow Drift is $6.99, 275 yards. Again, that's the color sandbar. And it's looking at really pretty true, the color. And you see there's a gray and, and um, some beachy like the sand color, and then it goes into a little bit of a deeper, almost a uh, driftwood color. And funny, that's almost what I wanted to call it, probably because it is called Willow Drift. But they have just beautiful colorways. And they are kind of repeating themselves a little bit. But here, here they are. It looks like there are six all together. That one might be called Limestone. This is Sangria which is this colorway here. That one is limestone and then um, granite, tidewater, and iceberg. So what I'm going to show you that I think this is very, very, very similar to, sorry, my, I have a hood. This has a hood and it, the weight of it tends to pull back. And it just starts bugging me in my neck. Get it off. Get it off me. Alrighty. Hobby Lobby Yarn Bee. They're Chloe yarn, which if you've watched me, you know I really like this yarn a lot. And I, I keep buying it. It's um, I can wear it for hats. It doesn't bother me, but it does itch my neck. And it is 70% wool. And this says 30% viscose. Viscose, for those of you who don't know, it's a plant fiber pulp and it's usually from bamboo. Like I said, 70% superwash, 70 superwash viscose, and this says 30 rayon from bamboo. So virtually the same content and the yarn be Chloe, this in case you're curious, that sun-kissed grove color. Excuse me again. So there's only a five yard difference. This has five yards more. They're both made in China. To me, they look very, very much the same. And even though the yarn B one, it, Chloe, it says it's a number four weight, I've never considered that. It's pretty thin. And, and to me, it works up more like a number three. And that's what the Willow Drift is called, the number three weight. So I'm going to just kind of carefully prop these up here. And I want to show you the difference in that they are so similar. Now I'm, I'm pulling, 
Oh, and the Willow Drift has a real nice center pull, by the way. There. I had that one I was tugging on a little bit. Try to drape them evenly. And it does appear that the Willow Drift might be a little bit thinner, but when compressed, or you know, you can see, look on my finger there. They're so much the same. Some very, very similar. Now, I, I, because they go a little thick to thin, both of them do, there might be, like if I pull out more, how consistent this is on the willow drift. Boy, that pulls out nice and smoothly. It's pretty consistent as far as the thickness goes through and through, whereas the Yarn Bee Chloe does go from thick to thin. And you can clearly see that in these strands, you see, right there. Where because how this is wound, it's a little bit harder to tell. But here's a spot right there. See, that's a, to me, is a little bit thicker. So that's why after examining it a little bit, that's what it appeared, but I won't know until I work it up. But anyway, this is a yarn that I do think from the texture, because it is similar, that it will be one that can catch on itself. So be careful if you have to frog it. And, and that can also depend on the type of stitch that you're using, too. I found that some stitches are much easier to pull out than others. But the problem, there's one issue that I've had with this, and I don't know if this yarn's going to be the same or not because the content is so similar. Now, when I've made cowls, things like that, no problem at all. But I've made two hats, one in, I'm like, where'd she go? Oh, she's right in my lap, <laughs> in this little slouchy hat. Okay, and you've seen me use this. This is uh, one of Laurel's, the dabbling hook, her pattern, Unforgettable Slouchy, which she used in the Red Heart Unforgettable yarn. And because this was so similar to it, I worked one up. And my point is, okay, I made one in this hat and then one in my dreamy beanie. And very shortly after wearing it, they stretched out so badly and it lost all its give and recovery. Look at that. I mean, it barely stretches and it stays stretched out. And at first I thought, well, maybe I made it too tight to start or the construction wasn't right for that type of yarn. And what happened is I had it on my head, I put it on, I heard and I felt a little pop, and and that was it. It lost it. And then in the Dreamy Beanie, it's a completely different construction, and it was a little bit to start, but the same thing happened. I didn't hear a pop, but it completely stretched out and did not come back. So I don't know as far as, you know, if I'll try it again in this yarn or what, but I would like to try in this yarn and see what happens. But then I would definitely want to be the test person of that before I wind up making any to sell or give us a gift or whatever. Because, you know, it's the last thing you want with something that you made is to give it to someone and, and the thing falls apart or, you know, just as doesn't last. So... Anyway, um, I think that's probably why I just got one, just to try and see. Oh, but one thing I will say is that as far as the texture and running my finger, it's 70% wool. Of course, I'm going to feel that wool, but it's smoother, it's softer, and it has a little bit more of a sheen to it, if you like the sheen. I like both. I like, now we're getting reflection. 
but I like uh, off the cam um, off the light here. You know, and I like some without sheen and some with. It just depends on the project and, and what I'm making it for. It's like I like matte and I like sparkle. But if you can tell, you know, this does have a little more reflective quality, but not in a plasticky, shiny kind of way. And it's I, I tested it with both hands, each one strand of each yarn. First felt them with my right and then with my left and kind of closed my eyes so I didn't have any preconceived idea of what it should or I thought what it felt like and yet this is definitely softer and it's smoother and doesn't have that prickly-ish coarseness that some of the wool can have even though I like this yarn very much obviously because I keep buying it over and over. Colors are just so pretty. <laughs> That's not always a good reason though, is it? Doesn't always work out. So those are the few that I got and I knew what I was getting. And then while I have the catalogs out, I just want to show you a couple of the other yarns because like here is one that Willow carries and that I absolutely love. And this is the Barocco. And it's a Barocco Vintage, it's called. And it's a very, very nice blend. Now they, I got mine on Lovecrafts and it appears that um, Hirschner's or Willow carries some of the same get it straight here for you, um, and different colors than Lovecraft. So I have different colors, but I just wanted to show you and kind of give you an up close of the actual yarn itself. But it's a lovely blend. It's 52% acrylic, 40% wool, and 8% nylon. And I'm not particularly a big uh, nylon fan, but when it is blended, and just a little bit, it can add such softness and smoothness to the yarn. I don't like a real high nylon content. It's just my, my personal preference. Um, I really do prefer the natural fibers or, or a blend. And so I'm okay with the 52% acrylic and especially being real sensitive to wool. It, it just came out to be a very, very nice mix. And it's a number four weight, but it's not a heavy number four. It's not a real number four worsted. I would call it just a worsted weight. You get 218 yards for a three and a half ounce hank. So that's, that's a fair amount of yardage. And this is in the color, it just has the number 51190 that I got on Lovecrafts. And I usually write the name of them down, but it's kind of a teal color. It's a little bit of a heather. And it has, I don't, I'm not even sure quite how to describe this color. Maybe it is a little bit of a dusty lilac -y kind of mixed in there. There we go. I think that's a pretty good shot. And you can see that. See the little bit of, not too close, a little bit of kind of those pinkishy hues coming through. And it's very soft and it's not densely spun at all. So if you're looking for like a heavier, dense, thicker kind of yarn, this is not it but you can, it's, it's very squishy, very nice. First touch, it doesn't feel much like wool at all, but it's definitely in there, you know, just enough to give that breathability and um, warmth. Yeah, so there we go, Barocco Vintage. And then another yarn that I saw, which I was pretty excited about, Morocco Modern Cotton. Oh boy, do I love this yarn. Now, 
Again, I got mine from Love Crafts, and they just carry uh, in Hirschners. They are just carrying the DK, Hirschners and Willow. However, um, Love Crafts has the DK weight and the worsted weight, which is what I have, but I brought it out just again to show you a close-up of it. And I have these two colors, Salty Brine and Matunic. And I looked up Matunic. Is that a place? I kind of thought it would be. And yes, it's like a village in a city or a town of Rhode Island. And Matunic is a Native American name for lookout. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And I think the colors here, at least my two, are pretty true to the real color. And they did a good job on that. So Hirschner's has a small selection. There are lots and lots of colors. Now the, the DK, you get 335 yards for your standard three and a half ounce tank. And this is Matunuk. And this is in the worsted weight and you get 209 yards. And the combination, the blend is 60% Pima cotton and 40% Modal rayon or modal viscose again plant fiber pulp so it could be rayon from bamboo I think on the on Lovecrafts it might have said bamboo so 60 Pima cotton and Pima cotton is a longer staple it's a higher quality and you know it's it's up there in the quality of cotton it's not the dishcloth cotton can still feel the cotton content but this is lighter weight because of the 40% of the viscose or bamboo in it. So you get that really pretty sheen and a combination of the cotton with that silkier, lighter weight feel, and which keeps it from getting too heavy. So again, this is not a tightly wound, dense type of yarn. It's not thick. Again, 209 yards is fair, fair amount for a number four for worsted. I'm just trying to pull that up a little bit so you can see it. Now, when I bring it in close to the camera, it's definitely looking a little bit lighter. And one thing is this is a little bit I noticed some areas uh, I could see this being a little bit splitty. There's a good one right there. But if I if I rub my fingers back and forth, say if I'm working with it, it doesn't fall apart and come apart on itself. You know, if you're knitting with it and you're using really pointy needles, you probably have to be careful that you don't split the yarn here. I don't know if you can tell. But anyway, just ever so. I don't think, I've worked with some that you know, didn't take much manipulation at all and it just totally split and it drove, drove me nuts. So this is Matunic and this is Salty Brine. I think they're just mm, yum, yummy, beautiful together. Yes, I do kiss and hug my yarn. <laughs> Tempted to sleep with it sometimes, too. Just having a love affair here with all this yarny goodness. But I just wanted to show that to you since I happen to have it. And I'm just really excited to see some of these. Okay, so one other thing in the Hirschner's catalog, or is this the Willow? It's probably, yeah, this is a, another Willow catalog. I, when I saw this, I thought, wow, no kidding. Okay, so Willow Cairo. Take a look at this. Cairo cotton. I think it's 60 40. 60 cotton, 40 acrylic. This is a 5.3 ounce cake, 150 grams, 311 yards. All right, for those of you who shop at Michael's here in the United States, and are familiar with Karen cotton cakes. Take a look at that. They only come out with it seasonally, and not everyone has Michaels near you, 
or can order have access to it. So I was really excited to see this because in my opinion, it is the exact, not even similar, but the exact same yarn. So now if you want to use this yarn, you can get it. Oh, I was very excited and year round, not just when they have it because it seems like they have it and then it's gone before I know it. And I, I brought out two cakes and I did not order this because I can just tell looking at it from this texture. I've worked with this for what has been out a few years at least now. I've worked with it uh, quite a bit and every year. And now it does, it does have a bit of that cottony texture, much more so. It's not Pima cotton. It's not even combed cotton. However, with the acrylic, it makes it softer. And I think for certain projects, it will, it, it's great. And what I primarily use this for, and I'm not saying it's limited to that at all, but I use this for um, bags, market bags, little, little purses, little clutches, tighter stitch, open stitch, love it for that, and for my summer hats, my bucket hats. And if you want to check it out, I have a bucket hat video, and I will put the link below. And I know it's it's one of my longer ones for sure, and I've broken up into a couple few um, because I do the self cinch tie for it. And you know you can bypass a lot of that beginning and just get to the start of the tutorial if you want to. But I give you a lot of tips and information and detail along the way. So I can think of it as taking a class more like than uh, having to go out and, and do one that's right there in the convenience of your home. And you got a lot of information to go with it and a lot of options too. So this is the Karen cotton cakes. Okay, and now they've come out in these really big ones which uh, they just started doing I think last year but it they're both made in I believe I shouldn't say I, I don't know where that one is made excuse me but this color is beach glass and I think they are made in China but I make exceptions a few times just because of if I think the yarn is that good and sometimes in this yarn I've had cakes where there are no flaws, no knots, no issues, and I've had others where I've had multiple, like three in one. And and to me that is excessive and I'm not real thrilled about it, but I like everything else about the yarn. And even with the cotton content, it glides nicely on the hook. You get good stitch definition, and it's, it's really fun to work with. I've yet to make a garment, but they do show a little vest here. And uh, it might make like um, a nice bathing suit cover-up. Yeah, so, okay, this is sea glass, and the color's pretty faded, I think, in this picture. You can see you're getting a lot of light coming in. It's very, very bright light and to me this photo looks a little overexposed and so therefore it's washing out the color but you look here at this very last one on this end. I mean, to me that's the exact same one and I've worked, I've seen every single one of these and um, in the exact same colors in the Karen Cotton Cakes and so this one that has the, the aqua, the kind of aqua tealish, the sagey, spearminty green, coral, and um, maybe a real soft muted marigoldish yellow. Okay, well, second one in. There you go. Same thing. Okay, so I'm excited. Um, even though the Caron is a better value for the price and the amount of yardage you get. And to have it available year-round and come right to your door 
and to have access to it, I, I think is fantastic. So it's a little more pricey. It's $8.99 a cake, but you get 311 yards. And um, I, I would pay for that because it it wears really well. It's a good kind of workhorse kind of yarn. I have the same little baseball type of crochet hat that you've seen me wear and I live in it in the summertime. I wear it a lot, a lot, and it still looks like new. Holds up really well, holds its shape really well too. All right, so last but certainly not least, ooh, let's get to the, the bag ooh, that we've all been waiting for. Okay, so this actually has a little perforated tear, uh, I mean, no, not tear, but perforated section across the top to open it. So why don't I just use that? Oh, I get a bag and a bag. Now I tell you, this is how, that was another point actually. I almost forgot to show that to you. It brings me, look at this on that Nordica, where the yarn on two different pieces, or maybe it's the same piece, yeah, it's the same piece, where I don't know if it caught on something and it pulled out the fibers, but they broke and it's right on top. And I noticed it right away, and I thought, come on, really? Are you kidding? Like, did it happen in the bag, or someone grabbed it, and they just grab and, you know, fill, grab and fill? But, um, yeah, I, I'm not real, real thrilled about a flaw right on top like that. Rather than just put all the skeins and cakes and hanks loosely, in a mailing bag because they do jostle around and go through quite a bit from point A to point B. And some of these yarns are more delicate and finer. And some of the labels are really, really sharp. Like this one, it's it's stiff and it has a sharp edge. And I mean I could you could easily get a paper cut on that and you see it's it has a came with a little tear so it, this yarn could have gotten hung up on that split in the label in transit and that's where it could have happened I don't know but oh look at that look what I just saw a knot right at the top two two things already of what I can see and hopefully there's not any more lurking underneath where I can't see but yeah that that's not real acceptable to me I don't know I have to think on that you know to me it's just kind of a waste to have to spend money to ship it back in both ways regardless of who's paying for it and then the extra packaging and uh, I don't know. What would you do with that? Just deal with it? Or would you call and, you know, say something and have a replacement sent out? I don't know. But that's one thing about Lovecrafts that I love is how they package and they put their yarn in these really nice reusable organza bags, which are great little storage bags. And it just it they're they're packed very neatly. They're not just rolling all around on each other during transit it keeps them together and I do wish that Hirschners would take a little more care in their packaging process for that even if they put it you know I'm not saying I mean, the organza bags are kind of a little step above and beyond but even if they were to package it inside something more protective rather than just tossing them in this you know, mailing bag, and they're, they're just all over the place. So here we go. I, I already got a sneak peek. 
Oh, wow. Wouldn't you know it? Oh, aren't these nice? I got more, more of this same yarn. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I got four of them. Four. Oh, wow. So I only have one of the flora. At first I thought it was the flora, the same color, but that's okay. So I, and this purple and yellow, I think that is really pretty too. So let's open this and see exactly what's what. And, and when I got it, I was kind of feeling <laughs> to see. That was my sort of cheating way of sneak peeking without really diving into it. Okay, this one I had not tried and I was curious about it. Willow Everest. Yeah, it's half your usual. It's 1.75 ounces versus 350, so it's a 50 gram ball. 126 yards, so it's 50% fine merino, 50% microfiber. I'm not a big microfiber fan. It's okay. Not one that I would wear, but I'm not saying it's bad or it's horrible or anything, but I have some fine merino and very different. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. Uh, it feels more like a super wash to me. But it's probably, uh, it's made in Turkey. Okay, well that surprises me. All right, so this is equivalent to three and a half ounces here. So 200, I want to say 52 yards. That's a fair amount. This would make a really, I know what I'm going to do with this. This would make really nice fingerless gloves. Uh, this would be great to blend in with other yarns. If you're doing a hat or hat with a brim or something, you want to break it up and you want a neutral color, this could be for the band or just a little bit of color in between rows of something else, kind of like filler yarn. Um, it's okay. I mean, it's not, it's not bad in, in any way. I don't want to give that impression, but it's probably one that I pro wouldn't, wouldn't get. But that's just me and my personal taste. I think this color is very nice. And this, and I like that it's made in Turkey. And it's called Caramel. Mm. I would call it a beigey tan. Caramel to me is more uh, has those those real goldeny, you know, a lot of depth, ambery, goldeny kind of undertones. But you know, to each their own color. Sometimes is a little subjective to the eye that's viewing it. And then here are two more. This this is gorgeous. Wow, wow. Now, sometimes the color can make a difference, too. I guess they, they feel about the same. Maybe it's just, you know, from handling this one, which has a lot of acrylic and it's so soft. This is, this is okay. Oh, is this a, what is, what's that? Okay, it's just a little fuzzy. I'm like, don't tell me there's another flaw. So again, 50% fine merino, 50 microfiber. This is absolutely stunning color, oh my gosh. Yeah, I might, I might make an exception. The colors are great, I don't know. Might have to take that back, eat my words on that. Okay, this is called Ocean. Um, China Blue, it is so saturated and vibrant and stunning and actually if I pull back a little see if I come in because of the bright light see, it tends to to wash the color out a little bit if I pull back now that is more true to color yeah that's pretty good let's try this one mm -hmm. like see how it is on the edge here out of the light where it's a little bit lighter at this end this is really more true to color right there. 
So here are two more willow wheels. Yay! These are good. And especially for people who are wool sensitive, it's just the 30%. Okay, so we have like um, more of towards the orangey coral. It's very pretty and vibrant. And the peach and um, aqua and another bit of a transition shade in there. Aqua and then we've got a turquoise. Oh, it fades really nicely to these all these different colors. There's the lighter aqua, the turquoise, there's the teal, and then back into the orangey color. That's lovely. And this is called Kingfisher. So I got two of these. Very, very nice. Thank you, Willow Hirschners. So happy. So if you consider, these are $5 each. So three of them paid for the entire order. So then I got, so I got a total of six, no, excuse me, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight pieces here. All right, I got two of the blue, two of the beige-ish tan, two of kingfisher, and two of these. And again, you know, see, look, look how squished, kind of torn that label is. It's so easily catch on something else. So I'm really appreciative. They had this, and you saw how kind of tightly, not like smush tight, but there was no room for them to slosh around, which I, I really appreciate. And this is called Pansy, and I think very aptly named. And again, to remind you, these are, um, what I say, 4.9 ounce. That's funny, it's not on the label. So this goes from an icy blue to uh, a very, very pale ecru, E-C-R-U, ecru color. And then going into this bright yellow and purple, lavender, and then the icy blue. And then back into the cream, yellow. Hope that was high enough. Yeah, I think this is very pretty. That can make something quite fun. Tell me, and what was your favorite? Do you have any? Do you like them all? Any that you don't like? Have you tried any of these? What are your what do you think of them? What have you made and how it worked up? Always like to hear your comments and know what you're thinking too so okay i guess that's it boy this turned out to be a long one thanks for hanging out with me and if you watched all the way through congratulations you made it <laughs> and i appreciate it a lot too all right well take care and i will see you soon all right thanks as always cheers